For years, man has battled to conquer the sea, developing ships from tiny rowboats into huge unsinkable vessels, engineering bridges from quaint little stone arches to mega structures that can span entire oceans. However, occasionally the sea can fight back, sending huge tsunamis at our cities that only an engineer on YouTube knows how to defend. And if you watched my last video on this game, you'll remember I engineered a pretty decent tsunami stopper. However, it wasn't without its flaws. So this is it, we've got loads and loads of pumps that as the wave sort of gets close to it, which could take a while, this is at full speed by the way, I've sped up the game, you wouldn't you wouldn't realize, but um, give it a few minutes. One eternity later. Here we go, you'll see the pumps actually suck up the wave, reducing the height of it. It. Until there is no more wave, our city is saved. And what a lovely city this is down here as well. However, yes, we do have some flaws with this design. Obviously, these pumps, they require a lot of electricity. I mean, if we head along this street, these are all solar wind, uh, what are they called? Solar updraft towers, which although I don't know how they work, I know that they're very, very expensive to run, build and maintain. So I want to know, is there a way of doing this that doesn't use electricity? Can we just deflect? the tsunami. I mean, sea walls are literally a thing in real life, so surely we can replicate that in this game. So we're back on the map before we built the city and we have the huge tsunami on its way. So I guess first we'll build a city and for this one I sort of I want to use quite a lot of this space to try some different designs. So I'm going to build my city way back here on this road which is well I think it was designed by an architect. It doesn't take the uh, the most direct route but still let's just build a nice little city down here. All right so we've got quite a nice road layout there. We'll paint in some high density residential areas, an office zone, some industrial zones at the tip of the pyramid, some commercial. All right, and then we're done. We've just got to add some drainage. So as before, we just grab some pipes and we place these under the road. So that's what we do in real life. So that's that done. Then we just take this pipe work over to the water source, which is over here. And we do a few water intakes upstream. And then downstream, we're going to put our sewage because we don't want to be drinking the sewage. This is an architect hill. And after dotting some hospitals and other things about, then we can press play and watch the city grow. Unfortunately, little do these guys know that there is a tsunami on its way to them. And I don't know how I'm going to stop it yet. But the view from the street is pretty cool. Like this city is going up fast. It's going up so fast. However, beyond this university, there is the ever impending doom, which this ship doesn't seem too bothered about. It's <laughs> but yeah, what I'm going to do before we get too far, I am just going to hit save and we will call this Sue. Nah, me. And then we'll realize I completely forgot to give these guys electricity. Oops. Uh, and they and they don't have water. Oh, they don't have water because I didn't give that electricity either. Oops, my bad. My bad. Oh, wow. But first, look at this. Look at this. I did not know that was on the side of this map. Right. You know what that means? It's time for a bridge review. An absolutely insane span. I don't even know if I can count how many spans there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 20, 21, 22. A 47-ish span suspension bridge. Literally carved into the side of a cliff. Taking a constant feed of traffic from the high up hills over here. Down a curved slope to our new city. Although to be honest, I'm not entirely sure why they didn't just carve the road into the cliff. I, I think I'm going to give this a 6.7 out of 10. Bridge review. All right, anyway, distracted, distracted. Let's get some stuff on the go. So electricity, I think we're going to lay some roads down and then we'll lay some nuclear power plants on top of these. All right, so that's those done. So apparently these should be making me lots of electricity now. Oh yes, we're making 21,000 mega... That's actually, that's quite a lot of megawatts. <laughs> Our whole city only uses 72. No, that can't be right. No, I still haven't connected it. Come on, Matt. You can tell it's Monday morning, can't you? No, I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I can't get my pylons over the railway. Oh, oh yes. Yes, I can. In your face, game. Aha. So pylons over to there. And then hopefully all of these... <laughs> That's a lot of red. All of those should turn off and then everyone's happy except for the people that don't have workers. But don't worry, you'll get workers at some point, I'm sure. And then we're going to look at ways to deflect this tsunami, bring it to a standstill without using electricity because we definitely can't spare any of that on this save. Now, in the real world, I think think the sort of the main sort of seawall is like a curved one so it sort of looks like a i would say a half pipe 
but like an inverted half pipe. So I'd basically want like a half loop along this side. So as the wave comes up, it like sort of rounds round and gets deflected back into the sea. However, I'm pretty sure with the terrain tool, I can't do like an overhang. So I guess to start, if we turn up the intensity and make the brush a bit bigger, I guess we'll just do a vertical wall just to sort of see, like that's our base test. We'll see what happens. But yeah, with the curved wall, it would be like a backward C shape. Well, actually, if I turn my head over this way, it would be a C shape. <laughs> Meaning as the water sort of rushed up it, it would get flung backwards. Now, I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen here, but I want to compare like this vertical wall with like a 45 degree one. I'm intrigued to know without the pumps, will the 45 degree sort of push the wave over? So here we go. You can see our wall is actually like twice the height it needs to be at the moment. But what happens to the water? Yeah, it goes straight up. Oh, is it going to go over? That's just about the right height that it didn't go over. And it's pushing the wave back. That's quite interesting. Interesting. It's sort of, it's mullered the wave behind. Now, unfortunately, if you look around the sides, the water has snuck in and is destroying my purple-headed warrior city. Yep, cars, buildings, people, they're all getting washed away. Uh, but deflection of the main wave, pretty good in my opinion. Now next, let's reload this, and rather than having a vertical wall, let's have a 45 degree one. All right, so this is the same height, it's just a 45 degree slope instead. So I wonder, is this gonna like push the water over the top, or will it still push it back? Place your guesses now. Right, it seems to be, I think the wave is gonna go over actually that doesn't seem to be deflecting very well it's getting very high people on the rear side if they're looking up well actually actually it just oh it just about worked <laughs> I think if this was slightly shorter, that would have been a disaster. So maybe I'll do that as my test instead. I'll shrink this. We'll try and deflect waves with like half the height. Right, so test one, repeat. I think I think our berm is pretty much the same height as the wave now. So this should be a bit of a different test. So water gets pushed up and then it literally just flies straight over. And then what about when it comes down the other side? Does it shrink in height again? Yes, it does. And then just annihilates the city. <laughs> oh, I mean, I knew it was going to happen, but it's still hard to watch. Actually, that build what that building survived. What is that building? Is that like a joke shop? <laughs> Oh no, oh no, now it's gone. Now it's gone. Now it's gone. So I feel like this berm sort of took out half the wave, if that makes sense. All right, so now we've got the cheese wedge. Is this just going to launch it over the top? I imagine so. What is the height of the wave this side going to be? Oh, it's, it's pretty much full height still. Actually, no, no, no. That's taken out quite a decent chunk. I mean, where's that joke shop? I can't... I can't see the fancy dress shop surviving this time. No, it's, it's just utter carnage. Okay, so the vertical wall, no surprise really, was a lot better. So with that knowledge, let's try a different shape. Rather than straight, how about we try like a triangle to sort of deflect it back in both directions? I mean, I won't lie, that's not my finest work, but... <laughs> That's terrible. Let me reload. All right, there we go. So the theory here is that the wave will sort of bounce either side because as we saw, the vertical deflection deflected it straight back. So rather than going straight back, it should go like 45 degrees back. And therefore, we might be able to save the city from being swept from the outer edges. That's the theory anyway. I mean, I really don't know what's going to happen. So ready? Boosh! It's being completely flung upwards and oh no it's just going straight over it's going straight over <laughs> oh dear i feel like if we had some more height that may have been good but uh that is quite a wave yeah but i don't want to cheat i i sort of want to i want to give myself a bit of a height limit so we're not going to do any berms higher than that what i might try and do is use different methods to reduce the wave's height before it gets to there so we'll go back to this layout with nothing and something i've sort of done quite a lot in my real life job now, whenever we are trying to slow down velocity of like a river or something, we'd use riffles. So basically, I've I've made these like lower than the berm wall. They're half the height of the berm wall. But essentially, you would do something like this to make a little pattern, meaning the water flow doesn't have a direct route to wherever it's going. So from the side, it sort of looks like that, which means as the water hits this, the water will come bang into that berm and then it will split to go along here through the gap hit that berm then through that one through that one and generally you'd see these on like a pipe outlet that like went into a river or something if you're trying to prevent the river getting eroded like you'd have the pipe outlet and then you'd have either like a load of boulders and stuff 
or sometimes this will be like a precast concrete sheet. Uh, it just slows down the water velocity, meaning your river isn't impacted by your flow. Oh man, that was proper engineering. That felt weird saying that. Sorry guys, let's, let's get back to the dick jokes. But yeah, anyway, let's see how this affects the tsunami wave. Because obviously in real life, I never defended against tsunamis. <laughs> <laughs> our aim of course is to lower the wave height so that our deflection thing will work so we'll try and keep an eye on the height along the edge so as this goes in you can see it's booshing against those and then the next wave is getting hit and then the next one is getting hit uh however i'm not sure that <laughs> i feel like he's made the wave higher <laughs> Yeah, that literally had almost zero impact. Um, okay, well, that's that's good to know, I guess. So yeah, tsunamis are a little bit different to pipe outlets, it turns out. Much to the disappointment of my citizens. Sorry, guys. Right, well, the other thing we sort of do in the culvert outlets, rather than having, like, rocks stick up, we do also add plunge pools, because that also slows down the velocity. So what I'm thinking... With this wave approaching, if I were to make like a big trench. Right, so there we go. That seems a bit of a fairer test. Now we sort of know, although the wave will drop down into this, it will pop back up the other side. But the theory is, because this is like a bit of a plunge pool, the water should be deeper, hopefully meaning it will slow down. If it's realistically simulated, that is. And I don't think it's going to be, if I'm honest. Right, so here it comes. It's about to enter the bathtub. What's going to happen to the height? Yes, the height is going down. Is it slow? Slowing down if we watch from above. You'd expect the middle to have slowed down a lot, but actually it's going at the same speed. So this hasn't really worked as intended at all. And when it comes back up, it's... <laughs> It's pretty much the same height. That did nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, sorry guys. Sorry. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> All right, so this is similar to the triangle, but I've tried to put a bit more of a point on this. It's quite hard to use this tool to do a bit of finesse. You can see it's a bit it's a bit ropey at the start. All right, so ready? We want this point to act like a blade and to slice through the wave like no one's business. Come on, slice through. Oh, oh, is it working? I think it's worked. Wait, what? The wave's gone through. Has the wave gone through? It may have worked. It may have worked. Oh, I tell you what, that was pretty close. <laughs> I mean, if I was living down here, I probably I probably wouldn't call that a win with that coming towards me still. But um, <laughs> it's definitely a lower wave, right? Is it? I, I don't know, actually. <laughs> but you can see the wave that has been deflected like this. It's only a little bit, but it is actually going back the opposite direction, which is quite nice. So what about canals then? We know that these are actually pretty good at deflecting water from last time. What if we did this sort of thing? And then just to help it, I might put these flood walls in in between. So then we end up with this sort of thing, which means hopefully that should deflect some water. I mean, it's blooming big enough. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone quite to town on this one. And it's weird, like these flood walls, they're like literally huge in game. But then when you look at the tsunami, oh, it's so big. I don't think we have much hope, but we will see. And one of the key things I will be keeping an eye on is the height of the wave in the middle. Because surely as the tsunami gets eaten by the canal, that should reduce in height, right? Yeah, if you look up here, that is actually, that's going down quite a bit, I think. Is it going down enough though? I think feel like if I was one of these residents, like if I was on the top floor here looking out, despite the graphics being weird and me being able to see through the wave, I would still be quite scared. Because yeah, I don't know actually. I don't think that in the middle, I don't think that's much lower than on the sides. It's definitely got some like Mexican wavage going on. It's like it is full on moving, proper having a party in there. And actually, I assume it's lost quite a lot of momentum because check out these buildings. They're all still standing. All right, so what about this? This is you. <laughs> This is a mess. This is using a combination of everything that sort of worked. So we've got the super wide canals with the flood walls on top. We've got the points that should hopefully help deflect. We've all, I did shove a flood wall on top. I don't really know why. I mean, look at it. Well, actually, if you squint, it sort of looks like the Great Wall of China. And that was a great success. But yeah, if this can help keep our city dry, I will be pretty impressed. I've saved it so we can potentially add on to this. Uh, maybe neaten it up. I did use anarchy, which means, well, it's just me anarchy uh, but yeah look the wave is hitting the point which should mean it gets split either side into the canals oh yeah look at that look at that it has been split we've split the tsunami now it's just a case of will the curvature deflect the tsunami away and potentially push the rest of the wave away or will it just go straight over the top I mean I tell you what that's that's not too bad considering what these guys have been through <laughs> 
I feel like some buildings might even survive. Actually, the majority of buildings might survive that. That's not too much water, he says, when tower blocks are fully submerged. But yeah, if you look at that chunk, that is a huge, huge improvement on previous. I mean, putting the point on has made this a lot higher, so that was probably always going to be the case. But yeah, not too bad. I feel like if I could try and reduce some more wavage at the front, I mean, if I do some more canals, I could add some more riffles, the riprap, you know, the old boulders that we are doing. I don't think that worked very well, though, if I'm honest. But I could do those a bit wider to try and, like, just disrupt the other wave. So what does it take to stop a tsunami without using pumps in this game? I mean, potentially this. <laughs> Whether this will work, I... Well, I, I guess we'll find out in a second. But we've got a large array of canals and flood walls. We've then got the rip wrap. And then I've added a big canal around the outside, which look, ooh, made a very nice bridge for our railway. That's such a high bridge. Uh, but yeah, let's see how it gets on. So the canals, they should be eating quite a large chunk of the waves out. And then hoping these will slow down the velocity, meaning that by the time it hits our deflector in the middle, rather than surging over the top, it should just go around the edge. So we're about to hit the rip wrap. So boosh. Oh, that is, that is mixing things up a bit. We have some turbulent water there. And the main part of the tsunami is hitting the splitter. I feel like that's a lot lower now. I'll tell you what this is actually working reasonably okay i'm hoping this canal should take a lot of the riffled water it's sort of doing a good job and then over here there is some water getting over but barely anything if you were these guys you probably won't have to water your plants but i think that's about it have we actually done this i mean zooming out there is a fairly major wave coming down on ground level. I mean, people are still driving through it, to be fair. I mean, to be honest, I think we've actually survived. There's hardly any water in here. They're walking on foot. I mean, they are hiding, but they're okay. See, that's a thumbs up. That's definitely a thumbs up. Oh no, I think I think she might be crying out. Right, ignore her, ignore her. <laughs> you know what? I think this might be a success. So this city has been saved and all it took was the... <laughs> Oh, that's that's quite a mess, that is. But if you think I didn't really do anything, let's look over here. That's the wave still traveling at full height. If you look along, clearly you can see there is dry ground in the middle. So I think whatever we did, it definitely worked. I'm chalking that down as a success. If you want to congratulate me, please put it in the comments. I will gladly accept. But for now, guys, I will say peace, love, and flooded nuclear reactors. Bye, guys!